after class 12, which they will graduate with a BBA and MBA degree. These are steps we could take under what we call it as the new education policy. So it takes, uh, I, it again is a privilege to share, sir. We are trying, even as a very young campus, to implement the new national education policy in letter and spirit. So this is first course which we have started, which allows the exit option, which is one of the basic premise under national education policy. The second biggest thing which a national education policy says, as per my understanding, is to have multiple discipline in institution, multiple disciplines within the institutions. For long, IM has been a standalone management school. Yes, that is our key area. That is our key, I would say, expertise, the core competency, as we call it in marketing terms. But we thought that why not extend it to the areas where it is needed more. So we are in conversation with Ames Patna, and we have, again, I feel very happy to share that we have already signed an MOU with them. So imagine in times to come, an MBBS student would get a privilege to do an MBA from an IIM. We are already working with IIT Patna. Let's see where it goes. But for sure, I always feel that why IIT Patna should have you know, management of its own, why not we partner? And partner in such a way that we are able to create multiple disciplines within the setups. Uh, I was waiting for Sunaina, ma'am. I think this is the second time I'm saying on a very public platform. You know it that I've already said it once, that I'm very, very interested in meeting Dr. Singh because that is another one institution which is from central government, which is, again, institute of not only national importance but international importance, and we feel that we should collaborate. So today I am requesting Sir as well, you both, to take my voice to her that we must collaborate. And I think the, the, this, the whole philosophy of cooperation is far, far better than competition. And this is what I also keep sharing with my students, that one and one is always 11. So yes, in that context also, we are adding a lot of uh, you know, cross-discipline functions. Uh, this student group may look small, sir, but then my students are all over the campus. And since we already know that in Corona, we can't bring them all at one location, but they are listening, going to listen to you from wherever they are. And also what is very important is that we possibly are a very young campus to go international. And my international chair is sitting here, Dr. Medha. In last two years, we've already signed up more than 18 MOUs. We actually have international students coming on campus in two possible ways. One is as exchange students, sir. And we, this is the second year that we are implementing study in India. So we have student, international students also under study in India, and I've always told Pedha that how do we create more such opportunities from people across the globe? Because I sincerely feel that if there is one thing which India can really contribute towards, it is in the area of education. And okay, it will be long before Western country would come here to study, but there are enough people, enough talented people in our own region with whom we can start with. So with that earnest, we have already started doing it with in study of in India program. So like any program which comes from ministry, we always look at it like this, that how can we contribute? And how can we make a very meaningful uh, difference in spite of our such a young age? So internationalization is something very close. And I here I use this platform to request you, sir, I think my youth delegation was biggest amongst the IAM fraternity to go to China when your ministry had organized a youth exchange with China. So I know for last two years COVID, nothing is happening, but my students are just waiting when we will create such next opportunity. So whenever, sir, you're planning anything, please keep us in mind. My students and my fraternity would be just too happy to go international in whichever way we can contribute. And as I say, I think Samant must be sitting somewhere. He has already started teaching in ISM Germany. So our collaboration is right from somewhere in Korea, which is Soilbridge, 
to uh, Elba, Greece, to Clermont and Montpellier in France, and all the way to Chile and Peru, which nobody really thinks that we can collaborate with. We have, I think, four MOUs with South, Af South America, and which is what we really wish to say, that we should become international campus in a very true sense where scholar exchange, student exchange, faculty exchange, all should happen simultaneously. And we really look forward to both your portfolios, sir, Ministry of Education and Ministry of External Affairs for, for some contribution that we can make in that area. We also feel very happy to share that we as campus decided to introduce new cutting edge courses like design thinking, R, Python, artificial intelligence, IoT. And this year, my students are feeling so radiant about it because finally, if there's one area which is blooming like, like, like anything, it is FinTech and education, uh, uh, IT. So it is a privilege to share that even as I'm talking, more than half of my batches place courtesy that timely intervention of my young team in the cutting edge courses. So by the time industry was there, we were ready with our offerings with our students. So that has really helped us big time this year. We are also, uh, we are also going to share the biggest pride that we have with us right now, which is our new campus. I think my team's entire very sizable bandwidth is going into getting a campus constructed. And uh, sir, I, without even asking me, asking you, I'll love to take this privilege that I'll take, I'll take you for a short round. We've already made the arrangements. We've already leveled the ground. Because till yesterday, the ground was all, you couldn't have walked it. But overnight, we made it ready so that you, we can give you the glimpse of our small campus, which is coming up. Small, not really, because it is 60,384 square meters, uh, 411 crore project, generously given by the Ministry of Education to set up a world-class, state-of-the-art campus. And each one of us are eagerly waiting. I think with every passing day, we keep pressurizing our construction team that how do we shift into that earliest. And I've already promised my team that next Diwali, uh, like this year my students were coming to me, ki, ma'am, can we celebrate Diwali? I said, no, this time it's Corona and we don't have spaces, but next year we'll celebrate it together in our new campus. So sure, sir, I think that's a promise from my small team that next year we would be uh, ready to shift in our new campus and that again in the state of Bihar would be a record of sorts because we started our campus construction only in December last year. The first brick was laid in December, and we are already talking of shifting with students and faculty next year by October. I just pray that nothing, corona or anything, doesn't come and you know, pro create problems for our plans. But again, sir, it's a privilege to share that when in April the, the whole country was down with corona, uh, I think my campus has still had more than 300 workers. And I think post chat we will have about 1,200 workers. And uh, I remember in one, our chairperson is Mr. Uday Kotak. So I very clearly remember in one of the board meeting, he said when corona had just started and we were worrying that maybe the campus may not take shape in time. He said, Vinita, this is going to be your begging, biggest blessing because there would be no shortage of labor. So yes. Uh, we are indeed very privileged that very next year we will be able to shift if all goes well. So this is the story that we've been able to create in a short span of about five years, sir. Uh, we know that uh, there's a lot of responsibility as academician. I, every academician whom I meet, I keep sharing that if India has to regain its glory, if India has to reach where it has this time to reach and where we should be reaching, where we deserve to reach, the responsibility lies with us, the teachers, the academicians. We have such a huge population wanting and waiting to be taught, wanting and waiting to be trained. And if this time we as academicians fail our youth, they will never forgive us. And we will have no other excuse to say that we could not make it because of some external forces or a foreign rule or anything. So we're taking this responsibility extremely seriously that we are the one who are going to make India a superpower by 2030. 
and the next century and next decade for sure belongs to the country which is mine. So let's work together to make this nation or make this country the greatest nation in the world. And with that, sir, I think uh, we would need all the support from your team right there in Delhi and from everybody who is around us. Thank you so much for listening to our story, sir. Thank you, and Jai Hind. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now, I would like to take the opportunity to present a few glimpses of our upcoming campus as the vision is about to take shape. take the opportunity to introduce our esteemed guest, Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh, Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs and Education, Government of India. Though Honorable Minister Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh needs no introduction, but abiding by the norms and customs, I would like to share a brief account of Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh's life and ambitions. Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh was born in the month of September 1952 in East Imphal, Manipur. He was sworn in as a Union Minister of State by the President of India on 7th July 2021. He officially took charge as Minister of State for Education and External Affairs, Government of India on 8th July 2021. Dr. Singh is a postgraduate in geography and earned his PhD from Guwahati University. He served in different capacities, including as a lecturer, assistant professor, deputy registrar, and registrar. He also served as director in charge of the UGC Academic Staff College and College Development Director of Manipar University till his superannuation in 2012. 
He was a senior visiting fellow in the Department of Geography in Manipur University until he joined electoral politics in 2013. He has published eight books and made numerous contributions to various national and international journals and publications. During his academic career, Dr. Singh also participated in several national and international consultative meetings on human resource management, security sector reforms, and land and livelihood rights of indigenous people. Since this election, as a member of 17th Lok Sabha in 2019, Dr. Singh has actively participated as a member to the Parliamentary Committees on Central Council of Health and Family Welfare, Standing Committee for Science and Technology, Environment and Forest and Climate Change, Consultative Committee for Donor and Parliamentary Rules Committee. Dr. Singh is married to Debula Devi Ma'am and has two sons and he dearly cherishes the memories of his daughter. May I now invite Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh, Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs and Education, Government of India, to kindly deliver the address, sir. Uh, namaste, good evening. Dr. Vinita Sahaiji, Director IIM Budgaya, STEM faculty members, and my dear students, friend, and also excellent faculty and dean from Nalanda University, and from my ministerial secretarial staff, and uh, the officers who are associated with me in this journey. It is a pleasure to be among you today. This beautiful afternoon, I personally believe that spending some time with you here today indeed is worth it. Interacting and addressing some of the smartest budding managers ready and eager to guide not only India, but the world. At the very beginning, I will be missing on my part if I do not highlight the historical significance of this place. It is indeed a matter of pride and fortune that you are seeking knowledge in the land of enlightenment, a place which is the source of most contemplative schools of thought of middle part and mind, mindfulness. India has been a global front runner as education destination since the era of Buddha. Your institutions situated in the vicinity of such great center of learning as Nalanda will need enlighten to enlighten you to choose a part of mindfulness. This was the land where scholars from different parts of the mindfulness this was the land where scholars from different parts of the world assemble for the pursuit of jana, mane gyan. It had the best library which met even our adversaries. Look in a way of us. We were more into skill based and practical learning instead. I hope IIM Budgaya would imbibe the true spirit of new national education policy. Just now, the director has informed and the Institute is implementing in letter and spirit of the national education policy. Congratulations for that attempt. I would implement the right earnest. I'm happy to know that the IAM Budgaya is already implementing new education policy, vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modiji, in the form of integrated program in management. 
NEP 2020 will play a key role in India's golden future as the nation is, all set to give wings to the dream of millions of our youths. This landmark paradigm shift in the education sector after 34 years would benefit the diversity, talented individual from various socio-economic background wishing to make a mark in this world by applying their cutting as interdisciplinary management educations. The objective of National Education Policy 2020 is to overhaul the country's education system by reorienting, redesigning, and realigning its systems and outcomes. A key aspect of this initiative is its emphasis on multidisciplinary approach towards education in a holistic manner. It seems to disengage from the traditional compartmentalized and so specialized system of academic thought and bring about an ambitious and collaborative approach towards education by combining different streams of learning, such as science, art, and commerce we need a singularly key of vision. IIM have been traditionally known for imparting specialized business knowledge, but they would further evolve by embracing a more multifaceted, multi-strata, integrative, and synthesized approach towards education. In today's world, a country becomes great not just on the basis of natural resources alone, but rather on human capital. The people, the real premium is on people, talent and expertise. You, the students of IIM Budgaya, are privileged to get an exceptional platform for academic excellence, having potential to reorient your future in novel ways. You, my friend, have got an opportunity to prepare yourself for the marketplace of ideas and information and become meaningful citizens and contributor in the knowledge economy Plan for future India. The contemporary paradigm of learning through doing was the core of Indian Gurukul system, where the relationship between a guru and his pupil is calm, senior, but full of mental churning and learning. We are aware of the enormously rich heritage of our ancient education philosophies and system of thoughts. The pursuit of knowledge that is jana, wisdom, prayag, and truth saita was always considered in Indian thought and philosophy as the highest human goal. Indian education was geared towards the holistic development of nature individuals. Its purpose was to create overall well-being. With this outlook, we gave the world immaculate centers of knowledge and learning like Takshashila, Vikramshila, Valavi, which set very high standard of multidisciplinary academics. IIM Budgaya has got the honors responsibility to become the guiding light for travelers on the path of knowledge worldwide. IIM Budgaya 
has a pivotal role to play in shaping the knowledge economy, especially in this part of the country. A great part of the Prime Minister's vision is the implementation of the Skill India mission. Once again, this is a domain where institutions like IIM Bodh Gaya can make an enormous impact. The future of business will be driven by cognitively intelligent and emotionally mature business leaders. I hope that the courses like the IPM, PGP, and PhD of IIM Bodh Gaya will create socially skilled, technologically sound, and emotionally responsible world leaders. I expect you students to become mindful business leader and leading the planet. Quote, education is the passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Unquote. For a long time, the Indian education system was being questioned for its lack of effectiveness. Business leaders struggle to find job-ready talent and job seeker grapple to find a job where their skill match the demand. But now, the future looks promising with a new revised policy in the process of being implemented, aiming to focus on the holistic development of the emerging workforce, the students. The National Education Policy 2020 is meant to provide an overreaching vision and competitive framework for higher education institutions across the country. With a new policy coming in picture, the college education will not only seen as a facilitator of degree, but it will be treated as a medium to build personality and it will help the student in their holistic professional growth. The student have now an opportunity to leverage the flexibility available under the new system of academic bank of credit. Does NEP empower the future workforce with more flexibility to choose their courses? As the policy says, there will be no hard separate among curricular extracurricular or co-curricular among arts, humanities, and science, or between vocational or academic streams. I am happy to know that IIM Bodh Gaya is already working in line with new education policy to ensure work-life essence to make students ready for the future challenges. Friend, in a new, in a few years, you all will graduate and, as they say, ready and eager to take on the world. India today is also ready to take its rightful place in the world. Each and every one of you will have a key role to play in the new India, a confident India. This I say because I appreciate how vividly India is globalized in the present times. A substantial amount of our GDP is tied to world trades. Our import and export have risen exceptionally in the past three decades. India now has more free trade agreements and peripheral trade agreement with our partners and allies than ever before. Our growing diaspora is 
making considerable impact in socio-economic life of foreign societies. A globalized India is a critical factor in making our nation most our nation not only an economic powerhouse but an economic superpowerhouse. It is in this context that I see great many potential and opportunity for budding IIM students here. Many of your own IIM alumni have become towering personalities among our diaspora. I am confident that league will only grow further from IIM Budgaya too. India will have the highest populations of young people in the world over the next decade. And our ability to provide high quality educational opportunity to them will determine the future of our country. Being an institute of national importance, IIM Budgaya has to live up to its expectations and work for all the stakeholders of the society. To sum up, I have tremendous faith in my India, a new India. I have tremendous faith in our young and especially the student fraternity. Equally, I have faith in the institutions of national importance like IIM Budagaya that they will deliver. I wish the best to the stakeholders and the students for the exciting futures that awaited you. We are indebted to the legacy of this land and too, we must play our part in matching the global standards in the quality of the manpower. With this few words, thank you, Jai Hind. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for such kind and intellectual words. Now, I would like to present a vote of thanks to all the dignitaries, to all the members over here. I would like to thank Dr. Raj Kumar Ranjan Singh, our Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs and Education, Government of India, Professor Vinita Sahai, Dean of Nalanda University, and all the respective and eminent faculties present over here. Thank you so much for joining us. And we specially, specially mention a thank, vote of thanks to Ma'am, so thank you for gracing the event. Thank you for being with us. So now I would request to all of you to kindly stand up for national anthem. Punjab, Singh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravid, Utkal, Banga, Bind, Himachal, Yamuna, Ganga, Uchal, Jal, Dhitaranga, Tab, Shubh, Name, Jage, Tab, Shubh, Aashish, Maage, Gahe, Tab, Jaya, Gatha, जन गन मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे